Amen. Give glory to God. Have a seat, everyone. Now, good evening, everyone. We are going to learn uh, during uh, these four weeks. These four lessons are the four pillars, the principal teaching from this church. The first session that is tonight is salvation. And then next week, we're going to learn about Holy Spirit. And then the next week again, we're going to learn about Divine Healing Blessing. And then the last session, we're going to learn about second coming. So, tonight we're going to learn about salvation. Say together, salvation. Actually, uh, the real Bible study for each session, uh, it takes about three months to finish. But we want to compre compress uh, salvation in three months, doing right away in one night. So I do hope each one of you bring your notebook. And if you have any question, you can ask at the, at the end of the class. And we want to commit that we're going to finish by 9 p.m. So no one's talking. Pay attention. We learn about salvation. The first thing is we're going to learn the difference between religion and Christianity. So what is the difference between religion and Christianity? Religion is, is the effort of a man trying to find God. Man's, man's effort to find God. And that is called religion. But Christianity is not religion. Because Christianity is far different from religion. Christianity is God is looking for human being. Let's see the verse from John. John, what is that, John 4? John 15. Verse 16. John 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. Let's read this together. One, two, three. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Jesus said that you did not choose me, but I chose you. It is not I and we who find God, but God who found us. So once again, religion is teaching that every human being should find God by their own efforts. 
their own work hard. Meanwhile, Christianity doesn't say that man can be saved by looking for God, but instead God is looking for man. And we just have, we just must have faith. So this is the difference between religion and Christianity. In religion, it seems like we are safe because of all of our works. For example, like, oh, you must do fasting a lot, you must do good deeds a lot, you must you must do good deeds to other people a lot. Meanwhile, in Christianity, by faith, we are saved. By faith, we are saved, and then we are equipped to do God's work. Now, let's learn together. This is the difference between religion and Christianity. Now we understand Jesus is finding us human being. A Proverbs saying that there's a lot of ways to go to Rome. Religion once again taught us that man should find God. And we can find God from many ways. From Muslim, from Buddhism, from Hinduism, and for Christianity. But in fact, is it true that uh, there are a lot of ways to go to God? And that's why the religion teacher said that Jesus is only one from so many ways to find God. For example, like if you want to find this building, you can take that direction, you can take this direction, you can the other direction, you can go from upward, you can go from beyond the same destination. The same uh, heaven. Is it true like that? Now let's see what the Bible say about this. From Acts 4, verse 16. Acts 4, 16. Acts 4, Acts 4, 12. Verse 12. Acts 4, verse 12. What did the Bible say? Let's read this together. One, two, three. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. So this verse talks that salvation is found in no one else, except there is only one name. Who's the name? Let's see the previous verse, verse 11, Acts 4, verse 11. What's the name? He is here is about Jesus. So we learned that Jesus is the only way. One way. Jesus is the one way. Why? Because we know that man cannot be saved because of doing good works. And if we learn, besides Christianity, all the other religions, 
they teach that after men dead, they have to go through a scale. Which one there is a man did most during their lives, whether good deeds or bad deeds? Muslim teaching that a dead man should should pass a, a thin bridge like a, a hair and uh, one hair is split up to seven seven times and it's called the bridge of Silatakul Silatul Mustaqim So if someone doing a lot of good deeds then the bridge will not uh, be break breaking but uh, he will go to heaven but if somebody doing a lot of bad deeds then the uh, bridge will break and then he will go to hell so salvation in other religions is only a question mark a big question mark meanwhile in Jesus he is God he incarnate into human being. Why did he need to incarnate into human being? To save all the human beings. For example, like in the podium, there there are a lot of a uh, group of ants, and then just wants to uh, clean up the podium with a wet cloth of course if he wipe it out with the wet cloth uh, what happened to the group of the ants they will die but you don't really love uh, these ants and he did not want that these ants uh, die so how did you do to save the group of ants? Maybe Judah can send the text message to the ants. Can he do that? Or Judah scream, scream to the ants, uh, move away, you will die. Can he do that? So how can he warn the ants? Judah incarnate becoming an end and then he can tell to the other ends that there's gonna be a danger then he leads them to another way then when Josh clean up the podium will the ends die no why because there is somebody or another end that lead them away. Now I ask you, can Judah become an end? Can he become an end? <laughs> no, he cannot. But I ask you, do you think God can become an end? Why? Because he is the Almighty God. He can become anything, anyone he wants. Because he is powerful. So, if God wants to become an end, he can do it. Now I ask you, do you think God can become a human being? God 
become a human being 2000 years ago for what to build communication with human being so human being were told about the way of salvation if you believe in Jesus you will be saved what happened next so men only believe in Jesus only believe in Jesus that way through faith men can be saved in Jesus now let's learn together this is the difference between religion and Christianity in Christianity we are given a one way to be saved let's see in John 14 verse 6 John 14 6 let's read this together one two three Jesus answered I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me Jesus is the way and the truth and the life let's say this together Jesus is the way Jesus is the truth Jesus is the life we learn that God who incarnate into human being finally he gives us a way to be saved he gives us the truth for us to be made righteous he gave us the life so we will not be perished now let's learn how is it possible that we need to believe in Jesus now I ask each one of you for example like if I say to Luke look after this some session I'll ask you to come with me to Nigeria for one month I'll ask you uh, to visit Nigeria with me do you believe do you believe it do you believe me <laughs> Because he knows that the pastor never lies. Uh -oh. <laughs> Don't believe me? Why? Because pastor himself never went to Nigeria. <laughs> pastor never know about Nigeria. Even he did not have the visa, the Nigerian visa. I'm not sure whether American needs a visa but pastor never went to Nigeria so how can I ask you to come along with me to Nigeria now for example the one who talks to you tonight is the president of Nigeria who asked you look after the some session please come with me to Nigeria I'll I'll bring you to live there for 10 years. You will visit Madagascar too. Do you believe if the president of Nigeria said that to you? <laughs> yes, he believes because why? Because he is a Nigerian. He comes from Nigeria. Even he is the one who has the authority over Nigeria. So all the other religions teach all the members believe in my religion so you will go to heaven. But 
the teacher of those religion teachers never went to heaven. So how can they bring the re, uh, the religion members to go to heaven? It is different with Jesus Christ. Jesus comes from heaven. He went down to desert. And he said that whoever believes in Jesus, he will have saved salvation. Because the only one way, the one way is through Jesus Christ. Give a big applause for his glory. Then we need to believe in Jesus. Let's see in Rome 10, verse 9 to 10. Rome 10, verse 9 to 10. Read this together, one, two, three. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. So you see back to verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then the result is you will be saved. Say together. Say together, I will be saved. It means that this promise is a guarantee or just hopefully. So we learned that salvation in Jesus Christ is not a hopefulness, but it is a sureness or a guarantee. So we believe that Jesus is the only one way for us to get salvation. Now, What must we understand about salvation? In theological, in Christianity, there are two doctrines about salvation. The first doctrine about salvation is called Calvin. And the second doctrine is called Armenian. These are two opposite doctrines about salvation. Calvinism teach about once you got saved, forever you will be saved. Once you get saved, forever you will be saved. Meanwhile, the doctrine of Armenian teaches that We must do hard work to be saved. We must do hard work to be saved. We must do hard work to be saved. So what happened next? These two doctrines are opposite to each other. Calvin said that once you believed in Jesus, you received grace. Whatever happened in your life, you still get saved. Whatever happened in your life, you will be saved. Meanwhile, in Armenian doctrine, we must do a lot of hard work to get saved. Now we, Bethany Church, which one that we follow? We must remember carefully. Calvin doctrine has some verses in the Bible. Armenian also use the verses in the Bible. So which one that is true? 
So which one there is true according to you? Both of them are true. Why? Because those two doctrines use the verses that is found in the Bible. So what does it mean? It means that we are the combination of those two doctrines. How is it possible? Let's see in John 10. John 10, 28. John 10, 28. With this, one, two, three. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Uh, the group of Calvin used the first John 10, verse 28 as their doctrine. That Jesus gives them eternal life. And they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So this verse is taken to be the foundation from the doctrine that saying once get saved, forever get saved. Why? Because we received grace. What happened next? For example, like a coin. Or a paper, like this one dollar. <laughs> this paper bill will be valid if it has two sides, the front and the back. Say together, two sides. Do you want? Do you want to have the money? A hundred dollar, a hundred dollar bill. This a hundred dollar will have the value if it has two sides, two pictures, two sides. You can imagine if somebody wants to give a money, money to you, but it's only have one side, the front side, with that bold guy, the grandfather. Meanwhile, the back side is empty. Is it? Does it have value? Or if it's only have the uh, back side, only the house, the picture of the house. But it has nothing on the front. Do you think it has the value? No. Now listen carefully. The same thing with salvation. If we only stress on the Calvin doctrine, because only by grace, whatever you do in your life, you you will get saved forever. Even though you still you lie, I keep it back. <laughs> oh, the more important thing is that we must believe in Jesus, then you will be saved. So, what happened if? A person only stress upon Calvin doctrine, then it makes the people live in uh, recklessly, live recklessly. They will live according to what they want. They will do anything they wanted to do. Because they believe they already received grace. Then the result is uh, it came uh, the teaching of hyper grace. 
this teaching teaches a lot of people that nobody should be afraid of the punishment in hell as long as you believe in Jesus because in John 10 28 said that no one can snatch them out of my hand they shall never perish now we learn is it true that Jesus only say about this uh, verse 28 if you want to learn the Bible we must learn it completely the, we must check the previous verse and the next verse there must be still correlation so this verse 28 still get connection with the previous verse verse 27 what did Jesus say in John 10 27 let's read this one two three my sheep listen to my voice I know them and they follow me Jesus said that my sheep listen to my voice listen to my voice I know them and they must follow me so uh, Armenian doctrines they use this verse John 10 27 they teaches that we must listen and we must obey we must follow if you don't listen if you don't obey you will be perished now which one is true which one is true both of them both of these doctrines are the commandment of God it cannot be separated from each other for example like the paper bill should have two sides then it has the value the same thing we must understand that salvation in Jesus Christ is short shorty it's a shorty Meanwhile, after we receive, after we receive uh, salvation, we cannot live recklessly. We must listen. We must obey God's commandment. Let's see now in Philippians. Verse 12, Philippians 2 12. Read this one, two, three. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Paul teach that we must always obey. And continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling it means that that Jesus already fulfilled the work of salvation on the cross but there is our duty what is our duty our duty is to listen and to obey him let's say amen now the next question is Is the salvation in Jesus Christ is a shorty or hopefully? How many of you say the salvation in Jesus Christ is shorty? 
How many of you say that Jesus in salvation, uh, just salvation in Jesus is hopefully? I saw some of you did not lift up your hand. So which, which, which group are you? Which one of you do not want to answer my question? Now let's learn that salvation in Jesus Christ is surety. Say Amen. Next question. After somebody received Jesus and he received a surety salvation, suppose like he fall into sin. He lived in sin. Is his salvation be gone or he still have it? Gone? Is it gone or he still has it? Hello? You say you say that salvation in Jesus Christ is surety and guarantee. Confused? Hold on to your chair. Now listen carefully. Salvation in Jesus Christ is shorty. And salvation in Jesus Christ never gone. But what happened is, if a person, after he received his salvation, he lived in sin, it means that salvation did not leave him, but he waste the salvation. He humiliated and looked down on his salvation. And he is the one who left the salvation. He is the one who threw away his salvation. Do you understand? Salvation in Jesus Christ never perished. What can happen is a person wastes his salvation and that person throw away his salvation. Is it true? Let's see what Jesus say. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 until 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Okay, one, two, three. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. It's not all people who will uh, shout to God, Lord, Lord, will get saved. But those person also has to do the work of salvation. Let's say Amen. Why? Because at the end of end times, there are some Christians, even the ones who already prophesied and did a lot of miracles. Those means people who were uh, who served the Lord. Those people went to hell. You watch uh, and also read uh, the book about how many ministers and pastors. Uh, serve the Lord, but finally they end up in hell. Pastors end up in hell. If the pastors end up in hell, how about the members of the church? How about the young persons? Now listen carefully. That is why after we receive Jesus and the salvation, 
We cannot live recklessly. Amen. The sheep must listen and obey his voice always. These are, uh, he is the Jesus. He is Jesus. Those are two the sheep. Uh, for example, the pastor is the uh, is the Lord Jesus, and he has three sheep. If I say walk, the sheep should walk, must walk. They must listen and do whatever the shepherd do. If I say stop, the sheep should stop. If I turn around to the right, running, shepherd running. <laughs> then all the sheep should run. But what can happen is when the shepherd turn around to the left, but the sheep turn around to the right. You know what happened next? It's not the shepherd that left the sheep. Who left the shepherd? The sheep. Do you get it? This that can happen. Self. Passion in Jesus Christ is a surety, is guaranteed. But if the sheep decided to walk to the right, they didn't lose the salvation, but they left the salvation. So, so they won't leave the salvation, they must come back. Hug the pastor. <laughs> Still hugging. If the shepherd retreat, if the shepherd is sitting down, kneeling down, standing up, running. <laughs> Give a big applause for the Lord. Now, if Jesus said that at the end times, some people serving the Lord but end up in hell, doesn't mean that Jesus did not guarantee the salvation. But those people do not want to listen and do not want to obey. Now I ask you, how many of you here can ride the bicycle? Ride the bike. Ride the bike. How many of you cannot ride the bike? You must learn. Now listen. For you, those of you who can ride the bike. At that time, the very beginning when you learn to ride the bike. Have you learned to ride a bike? Or once you were born, you already can do riding the bike? All of you learn how to ride a bike. Now I ask you, when you learn, when you learn uh, to ride the bike, can you automatically just one time, then you can ride it very well? Have you fallen down from the bike? <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> Ow! <laughs> uh, if you fall down and then you say, Ow! <laughs> and then you say, Ow! What did you do then? 
you rose up <laughs> or you keep on uh, sitting down and then keep on saying ow and then you say I give up I cannot ride the bike forever it's not like that you rise up and you keep on learning and then you fell down again and say ouch And then, did you give up the second time? Okay, I cannot ride a bike. You rose up. You kept on learning. And you fell down again. And then finally, finally you can ride a bike. Amen. Amen. The life in Jesus Christ the same way. God said that we must live in holiness. We must live in repentance. We must listen and obey. To be honest, all of us can fall into temptation, into sin. But don't stay and living in your falling down. Once you committed sin, you must repent it and then leave the sin. Then finally, you can overcome the sin. How many of you believe that in Jesus Christ we can overcome the sin? Give the big applause for him. Say Amen. Why? Because in the grace of salvation, he said that in Titus, Titus chapter 12 verse 11 12 Titus 2 11 12 1 2 3 for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. Godly lives in this present age. Godly lives. The grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness. Say together, say no. Say no. Say no to what? For sin. Why? Because grace Grace is not licensed to sin. Say amen. God's grace is not licensed to sin. Why? If you only put stress on God's grace and you do not live in uh, stability, you only live in hyper grace and make you live recklessly. If you see in John chapter 8, John 8, John 8:11 This is the event when a sinful woman caught and brought to Jesus and all the Pharisees wanted to throw stones at her and Jesus said whoever uh, never commit sin uh, that person can throw the first stone, but no one throw the stones at her. 
And then what did Jesus do? Let's read this one, two, three. No one, sir, she said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and live your life of sin. And sin no more. And in translation of uh, King James Version, it said that go now and sin no more. These sinful women found God's grace and forgiveness from her sin. But Jesus said to her that sin no more. Say together, sin no more. One more evidence. A person who was born blind. And then finally Jesus healed him. He received the grace of God for healing. And what did Jesus say to him? John 5 verse 14. John 5 14. One, two, three. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Jesus also said to this man, after he received salvation, after he received a healing, Jesus said that stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. In King James Version, it says that sin no more. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So it, we learn that after we receive the grace of salvation doesn't mean that we can do sin anytime we like. In Titus 2 verse 12 Titus 2 12 Grace teach us to say no to say no to ungodliness and to overcome all the sins. So we can overcome the sin. God's grace is not licensed to sin. But God's grace makes me overcome over the sin. Overcome the sin. Makes me overcome the sin. For example, I myself realized that one iniquity or weakness that is passed down from my grandfather and my parents to me is emotional, easily get mad, easily being upset. My grandfather has uh, thick eyebrows, my father has thick eyebrows. And my eyebrows also heavy. And people usually say that a person who has heavy eyebrows is a, a hot-tempered man, hot-tempered person. That's why women who has no eyebrows at all is safe. No emotion. And I realized I have the iniquity, the weakness in emotion. We must, I must overcome it and having, receiving God's grace does not make me uh, to, to get mad anytime I want. But God's grace teaches me to say no to all the ungodliness so I can live in self-control. I live uprightly. And I live according to God's righteousness. So what did I do? I asked the Holy Spirit to help me to overcome the anger. Everyone has different experience. 
and different experience how God teach you. God taught me one day like when I wanted to get mad. Then suddenly a voice inside me said, don't get mad. At that time, my eyes were red. My uh, ears had the smoke and I became a hawk. Suddenly God told me, uh, have a bottle of water. If you want to get mad, drink a lot of water, keep it inside the mouth. that I cannot say anything. I keep on drinking the water until it calm down my anger. And then after my anger calm down, I drink the water. And finally, praise God, day by day, I was taught by the Holy Spirit, by God's grace, Today, I can control myself from anger. Maybe you have different weaknesses. Maybe your weakness is phonography. If you watch a phonography like that, with open mouth. Once again, God's grace is not licensed to sin. But God's grace makes us overcome the sin. Ask God's grace to help you to overcome the sin. Until one day, when you watch somebody naked, before you watch it with your open uh, mouth and open <laughs> big eyes, then finally God's grace makes you feel like disgusting to see those naked persons. Then God will teach you. How about if you see your own mom naked like that? How did you feel? If you saw your own dad naked like that, how did you feel? Then you feel disgusting. That way you can overcome the phonography. Give a big applause for Jesus. Probably uh, another person have the iniquity or weakness is smoking. It doesn't mean that God's grace is a license to sin, free to smoke. But God's grace teaches us suddenly. God makes us to feel disgusting to smell the, the smoke. It means that God's grace makes us overcome the sin. Give all the glory to Him. And then finally, God's grace makes us to live in repentance. God's grace makes us to live in repentance. After we receive salvation, we must always live in repentance. Christianity doesn't compromise us with sin. But Christianity changes our lives. Say together, Christianity is a changing process. What you must change? You know yourself. Ask God to change it. For example, like you easily hate somebody else. If you like uh, hate somebody else, don't sing like the pain is in here. But you must sing every day. I must forgive, I must forgive, I must forgive. Or maybe you are easily get offended. You must ask that 
we can overcome the offensive feeling. So, we will not be bothered by the offensive feelings. Say Amen. Now listen carefully. How can we live in repentance? There are five st steps to repent. Five st steps to repent. The first step is to realize your sin. To realize your sin. Five steps in repentance. Realize your sin. Realize your sin. When people never realize that what he do is a sin, they will not repent. As long as I, re as long as I think that anger is not sin, I cannot repent from my anger. As long as I feel that pride is not sin, I cannot repent from my pride. So, the first step in repentance is we must realize our sin. The second step is to feel sorry. Regret. Regret for the sin. But regret only is not repentance. Many people in the church, they came crying. Not only uh, the tears rolling down, but also from the nostril, waters from the nostril. It's very, very long. But after the person regret, before they came out from the church, they repeat committing the sin. It's not repentance yet. The third step is admit the sin. Admit the sin. First John one verse nine. One John one nine. One John one nine. One two three. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So sins must be admitted and confessed. And steps four, solve the sin. Solve the sin. For example, because of your anger, then we uh, make an enemy with somebody. We must make peace because of our gambling and then we had a lot of debts so we must pay the debts we must pay the debts suppose like we like watching pornography we must solve the sin all all the pictures, all the DVDs, the movies, we must delete them all. We must throw away the laptop and give to the pastor. It's not like that. So the uh, number four steps is uh, solve the sin. And then the fifth step is leave the sin. Leave the sin. Leave the sin. Don't get near to the sin. If you play around with the uh, uh, what is that? the pain, then the pain will get all over your body. If we play around with fire, our clothes will be burnt. So it is better that we get away from all those sins. We must leave uh, the phonography. We must 
get away from all the sins that we know those are terrible. After we experience repentance, then according to God's commandment, we must be baptized. What is baptism? Jesus said in Mark 16, Mark 16, 16. Mark 16, 16. One, two, three. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. For us to get salvation, Jesus taught us. Not only believes in Him, but we must be baptized. Baptism is the requirement to get salvation. The word Baptism comes from Greek word, from bapto in Greek, baptizo, and baptisma. Bapto, baptizo, baptisma. What does it mean? Like if you have a thing, and then you immerse it under the water and you take it out from the water. It meant by baptism. From the word baptism, we must we must do the immersion baptism. We must fully uh, Immerse under the water. How about if a person believes in Jesus, but that person did not want to get baptized? Is the person get saved or not? If the person believed in Jesus and then right away he died, that person gets saved. It's the same thing with one of the criminals hang up on the cross with Jesus. One criminals uh, blas blasphemy, uh, blas blasphemy Jesus, blaspheme Jesus, and the other one repented. So which one that get repented? That get saved? The left or the right one? The left or the right one that get saved? He didn't say. He didn't say which one. The criminal that repented said that, Lord, remember me today. Jesus didn't say, get down from the cross, go to Jordan River, get baptized, and then go back to the cross. Then you follow me to heaven. Jesus didn't say that. Once he believed in Jesus, he repented, and right away Jesus said that today you are with me in 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 Fidjaus, in Eden. Because he has faith in Jesus, but he didn't have a chance to get baptized. He is saved. But if a person believes in Jesus and he has a chance to get baptized, and he did not want to get baptized, then he did not fulfill the requirement to have salvation. Say Amen. So I ask you, how many of you already get baptized? Which one of you did not get baptized yet? Did not get baptized?
June 7. We will have water baptism. How about other churches that teaches uh, did not need to have the immersion water baptism? Maybe they only spray and uh, put down a little bit water on the head. Or even they make commitment in front of a flag. Now let's learn that Jesus give example to do the immersion water baptism in Jordan River. Now listen carefully. What does it mean by baptism? Rome 6 verse 3. Rome 6 verse 3. Rome 6 verse 3. We're going to finish in a couple minutes. In the next one hour. Romans 6 3. One, two, three. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So the meaning of baptism, the first meaning is to fulfill the requirement of salvation. To fulfill the requirements of salvation. To fulfill the requirements of salvation. Because Jesus said, in Mark 16:16, 16, 16, we must believe and get baptized in order to get saved. The second meaning of baptism is when we died with Jesus. Romans 6, 3. Romans 6, 3. When we are baptized, we were baptized into his death. Uh, verse 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. When we were under the water, immersed under the water, it means that we are dead together with Jesus Christ. Which part of us that is dead? Our old lives. But believe it. After I immerse you under the water, I will take you out from the water. Because if I keep it you down under the water forever, you will die, really die. Then, but I'll take you out from the water. When we came out from the water, we become a new life, new creature, new creature. We are new creature. We live with Jesus Christ. So that's the spiritual meaning of baptism. After we must believe in Jesus Christ as the only as the one way, then we receive salvation and we must live in repentance and then we must uh, do the baptism and after that we must read Bible every day diligently what is Bible? Alkitab 
Our Bible is the letter from God. That is God's voice. How is it possible? Isn't that human being who wrote the Bible? How can you say that it's God's voice? For example, Jacqueline, come forward. And Michael Sofian. And and look. Michael Sofian, for example, like the boss. <laughs> He's the boss of a uh, going upward and backward company. <laughs> Jacqueline is the boss of. Look, look is the boss of. Always profit. Michael Savian, Michael wants to send letter to Luke. And Jacqueline is Michael's secretary. So what does Savian do as the boss? Savian. We'll tell the secretary, I want to over merchandise to look a car, this brand name, this price, and these details. Then, the one who wrote the letter, who? The boss or the secretary? Secretary. The secretary. Will the computer? <laughs> the uh, the style of the literature of the letter that she wrote depends on her background, Jacqueline's background. If Jacqueline is a military man, army, then Jacqueline will say like this in he, in her letter. Freedom, liberty. Herewith I stated that. But if Jacqueline is graduate from theological school, then Jacqueline will write like this. Shalom. Peace full in Jesus Christ for all of you. But if Jacqueline is a graduate from literature, then she will have another style of writing. She will say like this, Oh my Romeo! And Microlet. If Jacqueline is a politician, then she will use different tone and different language. But listen carefully. All that uh, letter that Jacqueline typed in. Whose voice is that? Whose command? Is it from herself or is it from the boss? From the boss. Then, after the letter was finished. Who signed, who signed the letter? The boss or the secretary? Then, when Luke received the letter, so he received letter from Jacqueline or he received letter from the boss, Sofian? So you must understand, the Bible is written by more than Bible consists of 66 books and it took it took about 1400 years from all kind of various writers from Moses 
Nehemiah, Samuel, from King David, Solomon, <laughs> not from Lucas Kasuma, from Lucas and John, Matthew, Mark, and John, the one who wrote Revelation. All those people wrote the letter like the secretary. Peter has a background as fisherman. That's why he used simple language. Paul is a theological expert. He used complicated sentence. Smart person. David is a psalmist. He wrote a lot of uh, poetry, literature. Moses is a historian, leader. He used the style. He wrote the book from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All the writings according to Moses' language and style. But even though all those writers, different persons, still the source is the same. God himself. Give all the glory to him. Amen. Let's say amen. Now maybe one of you asked like this. Why? There's Gospel Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And sometimes between those four Gospels, in one incident, it seems like the story is different. It seems like the details are opposite. So which one is true between those four Gospels? Now let's see. For example, Sofian is the bus driver. <laughs> From the bus becomes the bus driver. Jacqueline is a passenger sit at the front left seat. Luke sit at the front right seat. Cindy sit at the last seat on the left. Back seat on the left. Cecil, sit on the back right seat. Uh, Jacqueline is Matthew, Luke is Mark, and Cindy is Luke, and then this one is John. They are in the same bus, suddenly, at the front, there is an accident. Ow! Because Teresia is learning riding a bike and she fell down. Ow! Then, Luke will ride like this. Uh, the incident and also Jacqueline reported the incident and she and she also reported the incident the, the same accident from viewed from four different uh, perspectives Jacqueline said like this The person who fell down from the bike has a um, ketchup running out. And then Luke has different perspective. <laughs> the person who fell down is very skinny. And then from the back side, there's a lot of people come over and watch uh, 
and see the accident. And the person who sit at the back right side, look at the right side. There's a lot of mango trees, durian trees. But I ask you now, from these four different writers, which one there is the most true? Which one is true? All those four are true. The short thing is, they are in the same bus, and the driver is Sofian. The driver is Jesus. The driver is Jesus, and these four people are in the same bus. So, even though it seems like something are opposite to each other, but actually, they are all are true. Big all the glory. So, the Bible is God's word. Bible is God's word. So we must read the Bible every day. After we read the Bible, we must also have prayer life and we must attend the church and serve the Lord. These are the next steps that we must do. After we receive salvation. Up to now, is there any question from anyone? The meaning of grace is not licensed to sin is after we receive God's grace it doesn't mean that from that day on we can live in sin and we can do sin anytime we want but since since we receive God's grace God's grace will enable us to overcome the sin Grace does not make us to do sin freely, but grace will make us overcome the sin. Other question? In the Bible, there is a verse saying that if we don't know that it is a sin, then if we do it without we realize it, then our sin will be forgiven. But if we know and then we do it anyway, then our sin will not be forgiven. The answer from the Bible is, there are sin, there is sin that can, that can bring Death, there is uh, a sin that we do not want to admit it. A sin that can bring to death is a sin that we do not want to repent from. 
But if we already received God's grace, we fall into sin, let's repent right away. Do not stay in your falling down condition. We must lift out the sin. And then in the next uh, in the next chapter life and you fall into sin, you must repent as uh, God's strength to overcome the sin. Then we will overcome the sin. For example, like uh, when we learn to ride the bike. The sin that cannot be forgiven is if we fall into sin, but we decide to stay in the sin, we enjoy the sinful life, even we do not feel that we commit the sin, it means that we leave the salvation. Uh, a person who who likes uh, to read the Bible, likes to pray, but the person did not want to attend the church, did not want to go to church, is the person get saved or not? Salvation talks about faith and action. Action in repentance. Jesus taught us in Hebrew 10, 38. Hebrew 10, 25. Hebrew 10, 25. Hebrew 10, 25. 1, 2, 3. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. It is said that let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. Why? Because the day approaching. In King James Version, please. not for shaking the assembling of ourselves together. It talks about gathering as a body of Christ, worship, worshiping God together. Why? Because Christianity teach about Jesus' cross. There is a vertical line. There is the relationship between us and God. But there is also a horizontal line. Jesus said that love your God with all your heart. We can love God at our home. But how can we love our neighbors, others? By not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We must remember that in the church, we must also practice uh, and apply the love of one another. When? Not only to the good persons, but also to those who hurt our feelings that we say, Ow! We must forgive so we can love God, horizontal, uh, vertical, and we love others, horizontal line. So it's the same way like uh, coals. Uh, burn together, join together, it will make a bonfire. But if one coals were taken out, then the bonfire will die down. To fulfill the work of salvation, we need the church. Because the church is the training center, the place where we are shipped molded the 
place where we were teach, taught, and the place where we serve. Give the glory to God. Last question, last question. Oh, itu lo bedanya yang religion and Christianity. Religion, usaha manusia mencari Tuhan. Christianity, Tuhan mencari manusia. Uh, I'll give you illustration. Just come here. Judah. Joshua. Is trying to find God. Joshua is trying to find God and he has religion. Worship God. Lift it up. Trying to find God. Trying to find God. He's trying to find God by his own strength, fasting, uh, killing the cows, the sheep. Meanwhile, he's doing his religion. Josh is doing his religion. Meanwhile, Christianity. Jesus came to the sinful person. So when Jesus came to Judah, Judah received Jesus. He received Jesus. Meanwhile, Josh is trying to find God. This side, God is finding the sinner. So this is called Christianity. And this part is called religion. In religion, nobody can find God. But in Christianity, God is finding the sinner, human being. And after he received Jesus, he does all God's commandments. Wherever Jesus walks, and he will follow God. Meanwhile, Josh keep on, keeps on finding, uh, searching for God, and he did not find anything. Did you get it? So this is one and a half hours. It wrap up from three months, wrap up into one and a half hours. And I do hope that you can understand it, stand it well. <laughs> Next Wednesday, we will learn about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit class also uh, takes for three months, but we read it up in one session. Please come back next week and bring your friends and don't be late. How many of you will bless tonight? Stand up together.